You can set preferences for the Camera Raw Editor that can help you make your images portable and enhance your workflow. Hi, I'm Karen Brockney, and in this video, I will show you how to set preferences in the Camera Raw Editor in Photoshop Elements. This video is part of a series on the Camera Raw Editor. If you missed the other videos, visit my channel to watch them. For this lesson, I've opened four files from two different cameras. The ones on the bottom, the flowers and the butterflies, are from a Canon DSLR T5i. The top two photos that show a valentine tree of lobster traps are from a new Canon EOS M50 mirrorless camera. To view or change camera raw preferences, you can press Ctrl-K on a PC or Command-K on a Mac, or you can click the Open Preferences dialog icon at the top of the screen. In the Camera Raw Preferences dialog box, there are four sections. The top section is a general section. It invites you to save image settings in either Sidecar XMP files or the Camera Raw database. By default, all of the settings that you apply to your image are saved in Sidecar files with an extension of XMP. XMP files are very useful because you can copy your original file plus its Sidecar XMP file to another computer, open up your image with the XMP file in another Camera Raw editor, and your edits will be applied. It makes your images portable to be shared with other people or across computers. The other option is to save your edits to your file in a Camera Raw database. However, the Camera Raw database is only local to your machine, so it's much more useful to keep your edits in XMP files. You can apply sharpening when you sharpen an image to all images or only to preview images. So if you choose preview images and you apply sharpening, you will see what the image would look like if when it was sharpened, but when you go to save the image, that sharpening will not be applied. So usually keep apply sharpening to all images. In the default image settings options, there are several options you can use to tell the Camera Raw editor how to edit your photos with default settings. If you routinely use the Auto Tone button to apply auto toning to your photos before you make other adjustments, it might be handy to check Apply Auto Tone and Color Adjustments so that whenever you open a file in the Camera Raw Editor, it will be automatically toned by the Camera Raw Editor. The other options are to make the default specific to your camera serial number. In my experience, it's wise to only choose one of these default image settings rather than two or more because the combinations can be unpredictable. If you choose make default specific to camera serial number, if you take pictures with a DSLR, or then a mirrorless camera, you can make default specific to the particular camera you've been using. In this lesson, I've used two different cameras, and if I choose make default specific to camera serial number, I can make some defaults specific to just my mirrorless camera or my DSLR. You can also choose make default specific to the camera ISO setting. And that may be useful if you're taking a lot of pictures in low light and you want to apply noise reduction to them. But generally, either choosing auto tone or making default specific to camera serial number are more useful. Let's choose apply auto tone and color adjustments. In the next section, DNG file handling, there is an option to ignore Sidecar XMP files. If you've done all of your editing, 
within the Camera Raw Editor in Photoshop Elements, or in Lightroom, or in Photoshop, then you can just ignore this setting entirely. It's only useful if you have DNG files that were edited in another program other than an Adobe program that creates XMP files. Otherwise, this setting will do nothing for your DNG files. You can also choose to update embedded JPEG previews within your DNG file. And you can choose the size of those JPEG previews. I usually select this and then select medium size. In the last section, you have the option to edit keyboard shortcuts. You can select to use legacy undo shortcuts. This setting appears to have no effect in the Camera Raw editor. You can click either Control-Alt-Z on a PC or Control-Z to undo a slider change in Windows. On a Mac, you can click Option-Command-Z or Command-Z to undo a slider change. So these are the settings that you can use for your images. One of the things that happens when you set these is that your preferences are not applied instantly. They'll be applied the next time you open the Camera Raw Editor. The changes will not apply to the images that are currently open in the editor. So we've set a preference to apply auto tone and color adjustments. And when I close this dialog box, these images will not have auto tone and color adjustments applied. So let's click OK. And you'll notice that when I open an image, no auto tone and color adjustments are applied. Let's cancel out of this editor right now without making any changes to these files. I'm just going to click Cancel to dismiss the dialog and choose Yes to cancel all changes. Now I'll open the same files again. And this time when I open the files, notice that for three of the files, I deleted the XMP file that was associated with it. The XMP file contains edits that were previously made. For our purposes, the first three files are files that have not yet been opened in the Camera Raw Editor or edited in them, while the last file already had some edits applied. So let's select all four files and click Open. Now when we look at each file, the first three files, you will notice, have had auto-toning applied to them because that was the setting we chose. And each one of these has auto-toning. The last one is the one that already had an XMP file attached, showing that it had previously made some edits and therefore auto-toning is not applied to it. However, we can make auto-toning be applied in a different way. If we click on the drop-down menu at the far right and we click Camera Raw Defaults, auto-toning will be applied to this image. We can then click Default here to go back to the zeroed out sliders. Let's try another experiment with default settings. I'm going to open the Preferences dialog box and instead of applying auto tone and color, I'm going to choose Make Default Specific to Camera Serial Number and click OK. Now I'm going to open up one of the top two photos, which was taken with a mirrorless camera. I'm going to make some settings here. We'll go back to Default. Let's bring the highlights down to minus 50. Bring the shadows up to plus 50. We'll bring up the clarity to, let's make the clarity 30 and vibrance 10. Then from the menu at the top of this column, I'm going to choose Save New Camera Raw Defaults. So we've saved some new camera raw defaults for this particular camera. 
Let's now go to this CR2 file, which is from a Canon DSLR. We'll go back to default here, and we'll set some defaults for this one. We're going to bump the contrast up really high. Let's take the saturation up a bit. Let's take the exposure up a bit as well, just to make it very dramatic. And then we will choose Save New Camera Raw Defaults for this setting and camera. Now let's cancel out of everything. Click Yes to cancel. Let's open these images again. And if you look at the top two files, you will notice that these files have the settings that were applied to the mirrorless camera with the highlights and shadows, the clarity and vibrance. The third file has the settings that were applied to the other camera, the DSLR. The fourth one, because it has an XMP file, does not have the default settings applied. So let's go to that menu again choose Camera Raw Defaults, and it now has the settings that we applied to the DSLR. So there are different defaults. If we check this and do Auto, then we go back here and choose Camera Raw Defaults. Let's set this one to Auto, which is the different camera, and go back and choose Camera Raw Defaults. You'll see that we now have two different sets of defaults for the two different types of cameras. You can see how this program can be highly customizable and how you can use it to enhance your workflow by setting some preferences in that preference dialog box. If you like this video, I'm sure you'll like the rest of the videos in the Camera Raw series. Check out my channel and subscribe for more.